do, but we've just arrived. There's Jerry just parking his car over there. And it's a bit of midge mid shell here at the moment, there's not much wind. And uh, I've had to put the midge repellent on, but it's uh, starting to get a bit darker now. Tell you, that's some road coming down there. That's an adventure. Getting here is an adventure in itself, I tell you. Anyway, so the kayaks are down there. I don't know if you want to make that out. I uh, can't be bothered getting the big camera out or my light out, so I do apologise if this quality is rather poor. But we're going to get the kayaks loaded up and then sleep in the cars overnight. And then the adventure starts tomorrow. Right, kayaks getting ready. An early wake-up call saw us getting up with the midges and we were soon getting the kayaks ready and down the road. It was a short portage to get down to the slipway where we could access the waters of the sea loch. And our adventure was taking us into an area which is pretty much cut off for some, from civilization, and you either have to trek in along an up and down coastal path for about six or seven miles or get a boat or, as we were doing, make a bit of an adventure of it and kayak in from this side. After a bit of faffing about, we were just about ready to head off onto the seas and we were going to an area called Noidart, which is also known as the Rough Bounds because it's such a rough and rugged part of the country. And it's bounded on the south by Loch Nevis, which has a translation to Loch Heaven. And to the north you've got Loch Horn, which sometimes is translated to Loch Hell. And we were starting from Kinloch Horn at the top of Loch Horn and really looking forward to our adventure. We were soon on our way, and it was still pretty early, but my god, those conditions were just, well, they were perfect. The loch was a flat calm and had the appearance of a mirror, and it was just lovely, lovely paddling, even at this time in the morning. And our first part of the journey was really from Kinloch Horn, and we had to hit the narrows at the right time, so we headed for a wee secluded bay where we were going to stop and just yeah, have a second breakfast and check out how we were getting on with the tide. Right, there's uh, Jerry having his breakfast. What's that, Jerry? I that am breakfast. He is breakfast, yeah, but we didn't have our breakfast, but the hordes of midges had theirs. <laughs> the local inhabitants have eaten us. So it's now, uh, it's 10 to 7. We were on the water for six, weren't we? 0600. 0600. And we're uh, not far from Callis Moor, which is just about another kilometre up here, and that's a narrowing. And we're, uh, slack we're on... Slack tide is half seven. Yeah, slack tide's at half seven, so we're hoping to go through there at slack tide. And we're on Loch Horn, in the wild bounds of, uh, of Noidart, and it's amazing. What a morning we've had so far. Couldn't have asked for better conditions. As you've probably seen, mirror-like, Water as we've as we've paddled in the uh, the, the upper reaches of Lochorn, absolutely fantastic, and uh, there's a wee bit of light dappling the the whole sides, and that's our intended target over my shoulder, possibly the finest mountain in Scotland. We'll maybe come on to a bit more of that in a wee while. Debatable, but uh, yeah, this is just lovely. So I think uh, I think it's time to get back in the water to get away from the ferocious Scottish beasties that are. Uh, making lots of little pinprints in my arm at the moment, so yeah, let's go. <laughs> Whoa. So here we are, we're back in the water now, away from the midges, I'm just going to turn the, car, the kayak around some cocking around, and the, the, the bothy, there's a bothy halfway in the walk over my shoulder there, I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah, it's just flat calm, it's absolutely gorgeous, so beautiful. 
Oh, Jerry's seen a nota. Where about? So you are uh, in your one o'clock position. You're under the water now. Oh, there might be an otter in the water. <laughs> Let's see if we can see it. How far off was it? Uh, right in front of you. <laughs> Typical. It was probably just coming up to hear what I was saying, the uh, piece of camera. So we're looking for an otter. If there is, no come up now. Here we go. No. No otter. Okay. Yeah, look at this, lovely. Oh, there he is over there, look. Behind us. Again? Over, it's behind us. From where we've come, see it? Yeah. It's either an otter or a seal, it's definitely not a bird. It's an otter then. Yeah. We're being stalked by an otter. <laughs> He's having a wee look. You probably can't make that out in the GoPro, but you might see the ripple in the water. Over there. Fantastic. Wow. After watching the otter for a while, we headed on and it was just about high tide, perfect timing to go through the narrowings at Kalis, Kalis Moor. You have to be careful if you if you hit this at the wrong time, it can be quite choppy and the, the pull of the tide here is really, really strong. So timing is everything on this, uh, on this trip. Some more wildlife, saw some jellyfish, but the highlight was yet to come in terms of wildlife spotting. Anyway, from our secluded bay, we made it through Kalis Moor and uh, the next point on the navigational compass was uh, rounding the, the boathouse and then heading into the Bay of Barisdale. There were some sheep there to welcome us into Barisdale Bay and once again we uh, we got the timing just right here. Those of you that have been here before will know when the tide's out there's a lovely, lovely bit of beach with all these shells, white shells which speckle the beach which you can see we, we saw when we were kayaking over. The secret when kayaking is, in, is to get there at high tide or when the water's high so you don't have a, a huge long portage of the kayaks. If you hit this point at low tide, you need to drag the kayaks for quite some distance to get them onto higher ground. Anyway, the mountains were starting to surround us and before long we were arriving on the shoreline at Neudart. After getting the boats above the high tide line, we soon had to get all our gear ready and head, a, head the short distance along to the campsite where we were going to be spending the night. Oh, right, so we're fully loaded. Yeah. You see we've left the kayaks behind us there. Yeah, we probably not carry them over to the tent. So yeah. That's yeah. overkill. So we're heading to the, there's a, actually a campsite here, so we're, we're heading along there. But over here you can see there's more blue sky now, and that's Larven. Wow, it's looking impressive, isn't it? Looking stunning. Looking good, so um, we timed the... Jerry worked out the time, so the timetable... What, the timetable? The, uh, the tides. The tide. The tide tables. The tide tables. On. So we got here just uh, just off high tide, which allowed us to paddle all the way in and get the boats up there, so... Absolute sweet spot we hit, yeah. coming through the narrows. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a bit just where it narrows. I think I talked about it. Was it Callis Moor? Callis Moor. Callis Moor. And it narrows. And if you hit that and you're against the tide, you're not going anywhere. Well, you'll be going backwards. <laughs> so uh, that was time well. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to set up camp now. Once we've done that, we'll have a brew. Then we'll get our walking boots on. See if we can tackle this bad boy. I tell you what, it's looking good. <laughs> right, we'll report back later. Ah. Well, we've arrived and we've decided to come and stay in the campsite, as you can probably see. It's a lovely little campsite here. We left the, the, the kayaks over at the bay 
and they do ask you to try and use the campsite if you're coming here so we've respected that and we've walked it's about five no, 700 meters along the road with our gear and we've just got pitched and the sun's come out and that's actually keeping the midget at bay at the moment so we're actually just gonna have a brew here and then uh, head on head on up Larven, it's looking, it is looking fantastic. I can see Ben Screel behind the camera, loony bins over the back, and uh, yeah, it's looking good. So, time is now 9.30, so we set off, what time did we set off? About 6, I think. So we've done, we've done not bad. Camp is set, time for a coffee and a second breakfast. Let's get that done. Whew. We collected some water for our coffee from the wee burn that runs down the back of the campsite and before long we brewed up and we were uh, discussing our plans for the day ahead whilst enjoying some, yeah, enjoying some caffeine which was, was, was required. And our plan was to, to start at the campsite and then head up the, the, the path which takes you over Mam's Barrasdale and down to Inveray. But at the high point, the, the Bealach at Mam's Barrasdale, we head up and strike onto the ridge of Larven at a high point and then it's just a, a case of hand drilling the, the, the magnificent quarry all the way around with the, the summit just about halfway and it's a narrow arete that drops back down into the quarry and then back along to the campsite. It was looking good and we were soon striding our way up towards the Mams Barrisdale. Oh, wow. right. right, so here we are at Mam's Barrisdale, and this sits about 1500 feet. And from here, you can actually go up by the Larven, which is we're going up this way, or uh, Louvain's over this way. Yeah, we might be doing that tomorrow, but we'll wait and see. But it is warm, isn't it, Jerry? It's very warm. We're sweaty. It's, uh, it's, and, and there's no breeze. It was forecast to be quite breezy up here, but nothing as of yet. So maybe when we get a bit higher, we'll uh, encounter that breeze and uh, it'll help cool us off. But yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. After leaving Mam's Barrisdale, we headed across some yeah, pretty rough and boggy ground and there was an imposing face of rock facing us, but there, there is a line of weakness up it and some, some easy scrambling. Still, it's, it's pretty steep here and pretty exposed. You do have to take a lot of care to get up here. Anyway, we were soon approaching the ridge line where we would start hand drilling it round towards the top of Larven. that. Lovely. So we're going to go and have a bite to eat. Some lunch, it's 12.30. Oh, yeah. Well, look at that. Fantastic. So, as you can see, well, maybe you can't see, we're now, we're now on the ridge. And basically from this point on, we're just hand drilling it around in a clockwise direction. We go up the summit and then this lovely quarry it looks fantastic so far, and I think once we get round, it'll open up and yeah, hopefully get. How, how you find it, Jerry? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm finding it by map and compass and GPS. And <laughs> and <laughs> well, did you not just use your phone like me? <laughs> Google Maps. Uh, Google fantastic. Maps. No, it's lovely. It's splendid. We couldn't get a better day. I mean, it is just stunning. Um, kind of hard shift though. We've been been on the go since before five. Yeah. Getting the boats in the water, getting them loaded, kayaking in. Getting the tents up, getting the boats, well, getting the boats out yeah, of the yeah, water. Yeah, 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 walking along walking with the gear. So it's quite a hard shift. Uh, yeah, and we're starting at sea level here as well, so there's well over a thousand, uh, thousand uh, metres of ascent. Of, most of it pathless, yeah. thanks to our navigational crew. <laughs> We've now found the path, but yeah, as Jerry says, this is absolutely, we couldn't have asked for better. It was really calm and still, 
for the kayaking, albeit we had to put up with the midges for a wee while, and now that we're a bit higher up in the ridge, there's a nice wee breeze, which is just yeah. almost perfect walking conditions. So, yeah, we're, we've stopped, we've had a bit, bit, bit of refueling here, and we're going to crack on up and round the, uh, the ridge, so we'll report back later on. Just going to sit here for a bit longer and take some photos. Super. We got set going again and it was just lovely, the weather was fantastic and we weren't in any rush and we headed up and further round the ridge and we started to see the true summit of Larven. It really is quite a, a big complex mountain with a number of spurs coming off it and lovely big quarries. One to keep for a good day for sure and, and we were certainly getting it. So the path drops away here and there's Jerry heading down, drops down to the Bulak before heading up again, that's not the summit. The summit's just over to the right behind that, so still a wee bit to go. Yeah, a bit of care required here. There's lots of ups and downs going along the ridge and making your way along it, you're kind of dodging all these wee rock outcrops, but the one consistent factor are those views, absolutely stunning. And at this point we could see all the way down to Barrisdale Bay where we'd kayaked in just a few hours earlier. It really was just a spectacular day for it. Little Jerry, we can see the uh, we can see the summit now. Hopefully, you guys can see it as well. Over over my shoulder is the summit of Larven, and it's very very conical. Even at this position, it's just fantastic. The, the final pool. I tell you what, we've just been sauntering around the rim of the quarry, which is just even looking back this way is fantastic. I mentioned to Jerry, I, I think it looks like something out of Jurassic Park. I've maybe taken that too far, but. <laughs> Certainly. There's a couple of dinosaurs on it for a start. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, so it's just absolutely what a, what a place. Definitely one to keep for a for a good day. But yeah, we're going to uh, drops down again. That's another thing to note. Um, there's a lot of uh, ascending and descending coming round here. It's not just an nice easy romp and a bit of scrambling needed. Yep. Easy scrambling, but still some scrambling needed. So anyway, we're going to shut up now. I'll report back when we get to the summit. Hopefully that uh, it'll stay clear. I don't think it's going to cloud in, do we? No, it looks set fair. Yeah. Right, it's shall fantastic. we? Let's go. Let's go. Just stopped. I don't know if you'll hear this. There's a wee bit of a breeze now. But... Jerry's continued up behind me. 
this is just amazing. Honestly, keep why 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 to come to all this effort on a, on a day where you can't see anything? Because look at this, absolutely, and it's crystal clear today as well. Look at those views, all the way inland and round, and once we get to the top, you can see egg just in the, the skyline there. Fantastic. Right, I think another another wee pool, and I should be there. Ah, oh, it's tiring. Ooh, right. Let's go. A few more jelly babies were required and then it was a, a final steep pull up towards the summit of Larvae. What a fantastic place. And the skies were that lovely, lovely summer blue. We were nearly there. Yeah, there That's Jerry. Yeah, I don't think this is a top. That's the way down over there. We can sit in the middle one just now. Oh, there they are, that. The summit of the mountain has three tops and it's the middle top which is the, the true summit that sits at 1,020 metres. And you really get a feeling of, well it feels like you're, you're on an island peak here, although we're still on the mainland, this peninsula of Noida really has an island feel about it. Look at this, well... I was going to say we're on the summit of uh, Larven, but we're not because the camera's, <laughs> the camera's actually on the summit so you can, we set it up so you can get these wonderful views uh, down, down behind us. And it's, it's been a bit, it's, it's been a hard work today, hasn't it? Well, it's been a big day, I mean, with the early start, and the kayaking and the camping and the, all the farting. All that it. stuff, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, not a, it's not a route to be uh, underestimated. Anyway, I was, I was talking a wee bit, I think I mentioned it earlier, that it could be the finest, this could be the finest peak or mountain in Scotland. I mean, you usually hear about that. People, most people, sort of think about the Torridon Hills, Ben Allegan, and maybe Anchelic for the north, and you know the sky. But you know what? What separates this from all the other ones is it. It takes a bit of effort to get to the bottom of it, doesn't it? And, and that just makes it even more special in my eyes. I don't know about you, Jerry. What do you it's think? It's the first time I've been here, and it's a splendid mountain. It's been on the tick list for a while, and you know what? It may be the finest mountain, it may not be the finest mountain, but it's got to be the finest day we've got it. <laughs> we have, I, and, and the views are just stunning in every direction. Because there's so much rain recently, the atmosphere's really clear. You can see America, I think. <laughs> I told him that rum was America. He's going, <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> but no, seriously, you can see the rum, the cooling, the, the cooling on rum, the cooling on sky, egg, egg. Torridon, Ben Nevis. <laughs> down to Ardenmuck and Peninsula. It's just, it's absolutely, it's stunning. It really is a stunning day. So we're going to loiter here on the, on the summit. We'll maybe go out to that far summit, just uh, just enjoy the views. And then we've got a fantastic walk down over my shoulder here. You see this this narrow arete? It drops down to Barrisdale where our, uh, where our kayaks and our tent is. And I think going down there, there's going to be some amazing views again. I think the whole way around. From that last summit, from the first summit we arrived on, you can actually see the kayaks. There can't be many mountains that steep. You, you, know, can, you see, can see right down. You see the kayaks lying at the bottom of the. And we're kind of glad of that that nobody's taking them. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right, let's go and let's go and relax and take in these views. Anyway, thumbs up for Larven. We were in no rush, and we uh, we headed out to the the third peak, the westernmost peak, which has got a a stone which has been uh, lodged into a, a broken trig point, which is quite impressive. And uh, yeah, we, we went out and visited that, and then took a donder back to the back to the summit before packing our stuff up and getting set for the the return journey down to the tents, which was going to be exciting as well. It's a really sharp, sharp ridge and a rate that we were going down. The feeling of remoteness and the, the sort of wild feeling of Larven is kind of magnified because you can see all the way down to Barrisdale when we were coming back and it looked far enough away, let alone the the, the point of the closest civilization, which was where we'd started our kayak. You couldn't even see that. It was miles away along Lochhorn. It's just, just great. And you do you do feel quite isolated up here and, and care is required. It's quite a long trek back. Especially when you can't look at your feet because all those magnificent views. Right, 
right, we've come to a point where it's, uh, it's a bit windy, but it's been fantastic. We can see Jerry's just here. We've been enjoying this interesting, gnarly, a ret descent. It's been fantastic, absolutely yeah. fantastic. I don't know what to say. Super narrow. Okay. Can, 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 can see where we've come up here, up behind us. That's where we've come and uh, go down here. You can see down to Arnesdale. Oh, nearly lost my, my specs in my hat. That's just how windy it is. Yeah, Arnesdale down there. It's Kinloch Horn. And then you can see the route that we did over here. Look at that. Absolutely spectacular. So, yeah, as I said, care's needed coming down there. We've got a bit of descent yet before we get into the Stalkers Pass, so should we get cracked on? Let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Before long, we descended down into the quarry and we just had to get across this burn to reach the Stalkers Path on the other side. And we soon did that with these magnificent peaks surrounding us. And once on the Stalkers Path, we just plodded all the way around. It was still quite far to get around to the campsite, but we, we soon found ourselves back at the campsite, ready for some tea. Well, as you can probably see, we've made it back to base camp. And the sun's shining at the moment, but I tell you, the, the weather's on the slide. It's a bit breezier down here since we, since we left this morning. But what a fabulous day. We really, we really timed it perfectly. Uh, tomorrow, I think the weather's to, to deteriorate a bit further, so I think we're going to paddle out, paddle back alone, alone to Kinloch Horn. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Anyway, I've had my... Uh, I've had part of my dinner, I've had beans and sausage, I wait to have some chicken tikka and rice, and I've even got some sticky toffee pudding <laughs> there. Um, I'm a bit puggled, a bit, bit knacker to be honest with you. Jerry's just told me he had his GPS on tracking us the whole way around. It was nearly 1800 metres of ascent we did today, so it was a big old day, especially after a long uh, kayak in, and, and it's uh, not, not a route to be underestimated. A lot of uh, Wee, wee bits of scrambling and some gnarly ridges with long runouts and, and things like that. So yeah, be careful. But what a place! Absolutely, absolutely spectacular. And quite nice having this wee campsite here. There's, there's quite a bit of activity going on here actually. There's a lot of buildings. I don't know what to call it a wilderness, but <laughs> certainly the uh, the hills are, are wild and rough. Rough, that's for sure. So anyway, I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to put, make my second tea now. And I uh, hope that the sun shines when we dry out, dries out my, my jacket and my, my sock. So, yeah, I don't know if I'll report back tonight or not, or whether you'll see me in the morning. And uh, we can report back and see if we uh, we paddle back out or, or do something tomorrow. Anyway, let's just enjoy the sunshine. Oh, lovely. So after a, well, a pretty decent night's sleep as camping goes, we woke and the weather didn't seem quite so nice, so we made the decision to, to strike camp and try and get back along to Kinloch Horn. And once again, that was that was all determined by the tides, which were, well, just about as early as they were yesterday, so we were up and at it. So that's, uh, that's ooh, quarter past six. Been up for about an hour. So we've cleared the, cleared the spots there. Yeah. Let's do this final bits and bobs. And we, uh, we headed down to check the, the state of the loch because it's a bit breezier today, but we have to leave early to get that slack tide going through the narrows. So I think we're going to be fine. We've got our impact up. We're going to head down to the kayaks now. It's about a 15 minute walk and then uh, enjoy the paddle out. Hopefully, this wind isn't going to be an issue. <laughs> I think we'll be fine. Anyway, right, report back in the kayaks. After striking camp, carrying all the gear back to the kayaks, filling the kayaks up, 
getting our kayaking gear on and our walking gear into the kayaks. We soon, yeah, we soon got the kayaks down to the shoreline, just just off uh, high tide, maybe with an hour or two to spare. Trying to time it once again for going through those narrows at the right point. Test goes back. Here we go. So that's us on the. Uh, as we've just been <laughs> told by a local, the lock of hell. Is that right? Lock of hell. Lock of hell. So we're in the lock of hell. <laughs> and um, we're about an hour before uh, high tide, so we should be getting around to the Carlos Moor. Uh, around about slack water, and then uh, hopefully it'll not be too too hard against us up to the top. So super, right? So let's get paddling. Mm -hmm. Gale warnings. Not for us, south east side for Here we are, just uh, approaching the narrowings. There's Jerry over there, and uh, we're about half an hour away from uh, high tide. So we're going to head through here. We're getting pulled along by the current, which is which is great. It's a fantastic day, another fantastic paddle. 24 hours after we started, so better put this down and concentrate on going through this uh, narrowing of the the lock here. So we should be through it in no time at all. Let's go. Pushing us through a fair old uh, rate without paddling. See a few eddies here, it's always hitting off the side there. Yeah. That's pulling me a wee bit. That's fine. Sun's come out. Need my sunglasses. There's a seal here just a second ago, right here. So we made it through the narrowings at Kalis 4, and yeah, we, we we're getting old, so we decided to stop at the same bay that we'd stopped at on the way out, just to, just to give our legs and our back a bit, a bit of a break and a stretch. Now we've just come ashore to stretch our backs, that's us at slack tide now. It was quite good coming through there wasn't it, there wasn't any issues? Lovely. no issues at all, despite the forecast and yeah. the rest of it. I know, yeah some w windy weather forecast Jerry picked up on his, uh, what's the technical term for your radio? VHF Marine Band, um, but you know it's lovely here. Um, we were a bit worried about the down gusts coming in from the south, but yeah, I think you do need to be careful. We, we've we've been quite lucky. It's definitely want to keep for a for a nice calm spell. I think the, the the narrows can get a bit lively at other times if you if you judge it wrong with the tide and the winds and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, so we just stopped here. This is the same spot we stopped at yesterday. And it's just lovely. A few seals following Jerry's boat. Uh, no otters yet, but that was a bit further in we saw the otter, wasn't it yesterday? Yeah, yeah. So, we'll see. Anyway, we'll get back in the back, back in the kayaks and we should be at Kinloch Horn in about half an hour. We'll see. <laughs> Super. <laughs> My jeez. So we were back on the water for the final stretch back to Kinlochhorn, but one of the highlights of the trip was still still about to happen, and it was leaving the best till last. It was surprising, but amazing when it happened. Where are they? Yeah. 
just seen some dolphins. Oh, you can see that. So in addition to the seals and the otters that we'd seen, that a pod of porpoise came along and kept us company for the last wee bit. They were obviously fishing, <laughs> having their breakfast at this point, and it's just a shame I didn't have a, a better camera. It was just a GoPro, but they were about 20 metres away from us at one point. But what a magical thing to experience, and right at the end. And it gave us a little boost and those aches and pains faded, and we were soon paddling with a spring, you know, spring in our paddle, <laughs> and arriving back at Kinlochor. <laughs> what an amazing, amazing adventure it had been. Absolutely superb, and one that I can thoroughly recommend. Thank you.